So about a year ago, I joined College Board, and by, kind of my role was to help establish the new media department. Um, they literally had nothing to start when I started. Um, and if, if you don't know, College Board is the people who invented the SAT, the AP. Um, they're about a $600 million organization. Um, their mission is to help kids connect with college success. And they literally had no digital media presence. Um, very little web presence, no mobile apps, no social apps, uh, especially no open API or developer community. Um, so I actually am here today to kind of talk about over the last year what I've done since I started to help kind of rapidly uh, facilitate the creation of a digital presence for them and an open API community. So again, a year ago, I was at BAPI, I was an attendee, I just started my new job. Um, and I really didn't know where to start. Um, I knew that College Board had a bunch of assets. I mean, they had this great data. They invented the SAT and the AP. Um, they had admissions details from every college and uni university in America. Um, they had the content of every question that was ever used on any AP test or any SAT test that they kind of cycled through each year. Um, so my question, I was literally in the audience, just like you probably, sitting there saying, what do I do now? Where do I even start? So that's where inspiration struck. I, can, I call that my Peter Parker getting bit by the radioactive spider moment. Um, and I think something changed forever that day. It clicked that with a motivated community of developers that were outside of our full-time staff of developers, we could really do a lot of things fast. Um, if we could just open up some of our APIs and data, we really could have a game changer on our hands. Um, it wasn't just a cool techie thing to do. It was literally could be a game changer. Um, so I decided from that day forward, it was my new superhero mission to open up and free these APIs and data at the College Board. And that's where my superhero journey began. Um, despite the fact that I was literally now a superhero, um, it wasn't going to be easy. I mean, there was a lot of things that I just had to do to champion and sell this to the organization. It's a 110-year-old organization. People didn't know what a web service was or an API was. Um, executive leadership certainly didn't. So I literally started at the beginning and I had to explain not only what an API was, but also what the value was of opening them up to external developers and what the impact could have positively for them. So this should serve as a step-by-step -step guide for anyone who's in the same situation that's just trying to figure out where to start and, and what to do next. So first step, I educated executive leadership. I literally made sure that senior leadership knew the most basic verbiage and had the most basic understanding of what everything was around SOA, around web services, around APIs, um, similar to, I think, what Orange showed in his talk. I mean, they, it got to the point where they were actually using SOA and web services on their own in conversations, which was great. And my, kind of our philosophy back then was, the onus is on us to sell them on this. Just because we're saying to do the right things and they're not buying what we're selling, that's, that's our fault. So I think we did a good thing early on by saying, it's our responsibility to sell executive leadership. It's not okay for us to say, ah, oh, we told you so, you didn't listen, so be it. So here's what I did. We literally started at the very beginning, um, educated everyone on an API 101 class. What's a web service, what's SOA, what's it mean? We were sure to emphasize that we're not reinventing the wheel here. We're not so far ahead on the adoption curve that we're way out there, because we're not Google or Microsoft, and it's okay for us to be kind of in the middle. Um, but a lot of companies are already doing this. We're not the first. It's time to join them. There's a lot of emerging trends that we could leverage to generate buzz and make it pretty easy to roll this stuff out in a low-risk manner. And then last, we worked, we brought in experts. So one of the things that I've seen work well there is you bring in Accenture to come say something you're already saying, but having them say it means an expert says it, so it's okay. Um, I think Accenture is pretty well doing that. Um, I actually used uh, Devin and Dalen from Ashery a lot, um, so it was helpful to have them on calls talking about things <laughs> um, and helping be my kind of expert. So it wasn't just me saying these things, it was someone who's an expert. Uh, that really went a long way. So next, I think it's really important, and we, we learned this, to make sure that leadership is aware of the key values. 
um, it's, there's a lot of values. It's really easy to just look at the revenue generation potential. But that's not always the most important thing and not always the only value worth touting. So we made sure that leadership knew about all the different levers you could pull. Um, we're a nonprofit, so a lot of times just extending our mission is almost as important in some cases than generating margin or new revenue streams, sometimes. So here's the values we identified. First was revenue generation, of course. You do have to talk about that one. That's the easy one. Um, and most of the time, this re results in new revenue streams that have high margin, which is, which is important. But next is cost reduction. So especially in a nonprofit, sometimes it's e in a business for that matter, the other way to get more profitable or higher margins is to obviously reduce the bottom line. So there's a, there's a cost savings and expense structure component um, to, to opening up your API and doing this stuff. And it's worth talking about. For us and for anyone else who's from a nonprofit, um, extending your mission, and you know this, extending your mission a lot of times is just as important as these other two values. Um, our mission is to help connect kids with college success. So by opening up our API and getting more data available out there and having a broader digital reach and reaching more students and potentially helping them, um, that's a, as, as relevant a sell as making more money for us. The fourth one is innovation speed. I think that's probably the, the key, key buzzword in 2010, but it's, it's relevant. Um, the speed to innovate, the speed to market, the speed to fail fast, try things, do things better, faster, cheaper is key. And we had a big problem. We, like I mentioned before, we didn't have a broad digital reach. We didn't have a lot of web, mobile, social. And we couldn't do it all ourselves the old-fashioned way. So this really helps there. And then last, this is more of a competitive advantage, but I think flooding the digital market. So when you have a developer community, when you have an open API, when you have people building more of your stuff with your data and your APIs, with or without your name on it, that helps you be out there, be in front of more people, potentially flood the market, which I think could be a good thing, depending how you execute on it. So next, know your audience. We, again, are kind of unique in that we service so many different broad types of people, different personas. Um, we literally serve students, parents, teachers, administrators, school districts, colleges, universities, commercial education companies, Capitol Hill, we have a board of trustees, the list is endless. I think it's important to know who you're gonna focus on early, because if you try to be everything to everyone, you're probably gonna fail. So early on we said students are our initial focus. There's also parents and teachers, but I think that's really what we honed in on. So we talked about four key personas initially. Students, don't plan to charge them. Um, they're our main part of our, our um, mission. That's who we're gonna help. Next was weekend hackers. So although they're not necessarily a, a direct constituency that we serve at College Board, from an API perspective, they could be huge for us. They're very vocal, um, they're very motivated, they're gonna innovate rapidly and try new things. Um, we probably are not gonna charge them. There may be certain situations for certain APIs, but you really wanna to win the weekend hacker crowd on your side. Corporate partners, so there's a little bit of a, of a tightrope act for us in that we, we play with a lot of different corporate partners in the e-learning and education space. Um, but I think we will apply a standard licensing model to them. They can could, they could leverage our data just like anybody else. And then last is colleges and universities. Likely free, we're, we're essentially a membership organization for colleges and universities. So gotta be a little careful there, but um, they could be a, they actually voluntarily already give us all of their enrollment information every year, which is, which is great data and it's public. Um, so we are kind of like the keepers of that data. So that could be huge for us. And it already is. Um, so next, in selling to senior leadership, be sure to start small. So we ha we're holding a small contest with a single API and a closed audience. Um, we happen, since we invented AP and still uh, administer all the tests for AP, there's an AP computer science track. So those are high school kids that know how to code Java that can already build things um, that we decided would be a really low risk, easy way for us to start. So they are, they are kind of our closed audience. We'll give a scholarship away to the winner. That's actually underway right now. Um, but that's a good example of a way to start small, um, try something cheap and easy. It also gives us a tangible win. Um, so we have a case later on for full-blown investments. That was kind of where we started off to show people, here's proof. This is not, we're not crazy. So once you've succeeded and you've reached true superhero status, like me, um, that's when the fun begins. 
You get to present at events like this and compare yourself to, to Superman. Um, but Superman himself said, with great power comes great responsibility. So to support a community of, of rabid fans, it would take a whole other presentation. So actually building and managing your community. Um, I don't want to steal the thunder from the other presenters because I am a superhero, so I won't get into that. But what I will talk about is how to measure and celebrate your success. So I think it's important, as you, which you saw with Mike's presentation, along the way, be sure to chart where you start and where you're, where you're at now and where you're headed. So it's a PowerPoint, so I had to have at least one graph on here, but I kind of made a superhero graph. We started with zero, and now we're up, we're, we're getting there, but I think by this time next year, we expect to have hundreds if not thousands of new apps. So we're kind of on that early growth trajectory at this point in time, um, but we're 100% tracking where we're going, what we're doing, and that's part of once you've sold leadership, showing that you're actually successful and you weren't completely full of crap. So speaking of new digital apps, let's see if this works, I want to show you a quick video of one of the types of apps that our API enables. Um, we've got a lot of hard copy books, and one of the big problems for us, and we sell them, so one of the big problems for us is how do you make digital versions of those books? So this. So that's just one example of, I think, what this, for us, kind of enabled. It's we, to do that in the past, before we had this open, AP, open API, or to do these things all entirely ourselves, would just have not been realistic. It would have taken a ton of internal resources away from other things. It would have cost a lot of money. So next. Sorry about that. So in closing, remember, Exposing data can be a lot like exposing yourself. And the same rules do apply. Avoid cold climate. If your organization's not receptive, put in the work to turn them around. Be careful around minors. The rules change dramatically when you're dealing with underage data. We have that problem every single day. Um, sometimes you just don't want to go there, or at least be very, very careful. If you charge, people may not pay, depending. This is where beta testing can help. Take a scientific approach to figuring out a model and don't necessarily come out of the gate charging money. I think for us, we started free. So in closing, there's always risk to opening up your data and APIs. Be upfront about them, set basic rules, protect your backside or front side in the previous slide's example, and the sky is the limit. Thank you very much. So um, we're going to call uh, the next panel up, but before we do that, um, Danny is truly a superhero. Oh. He was not on the <laughs> roster to speak um, here, but after we saw Danny speak in New York, uh, people were so energized and excited about him telling his story of his journey.
that I immediately emailed him, please come to San Francisco. He had a very important meeting with Top Brass today to actually present the API strategy. Yep. We convinced him to video conference into the meeting, which he successfully yep. did this morning. And um, Danny and so many others that we've talked to are really about forging this new path with APIs as a business. It's like it was 10 years ago with the web, um, and we're battling um, oftentimes internal skeptics, external skeptics, but the excitement that we see at places like BAPI, where in New York alone we had three people come up to us and talk about their past year forging paths, getting um, promotions based on what they're doing. So we are presenting Danny Get with the cape. very first <laughs> official superhero cape with the um, College awesome. Board logo on it. So um, <laughs> first official presentation. Nice. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much.